right, this is uh, Amer and Zur. We just uh, heard a great talk with uh, Professor Anil Gupta, who is the uh, who's a professor in the in Indian Institute of Management um, uh, University and an executive vice, vice chair at the National Innovation Foundation in India. He's, uh, he is a guru in the field of innovation, and uh, we he uh, we're here with him now in J Jaipur in India, uh, and he's been talking to the Evian Group uh, Foundation with the uh, Cuts Group. So, um, Professor, thanks for taking out the time to speak with us. Uh, just give us a little bit of your background. How did you get started in the field of innovation? I would say that uh, right from my early uh, years in the bank when I was working from 75 to 80 uh, during that period, I realized that there was a lot of richness among common people who have a lot of uncommon knowledge. And that still didn't produce enough impact on me, so I went to Bangladesh in 85, 86, tried to work with very economically very poor people. When I came back, I realized that there was tremendous creativity in that country, though 60% people are landless. And I asked myself, can we harness this creativity for a more inclusive development? And that is how this network of Honeybee Network was formed, which has now been able to access more than 140,000 innovations and traditional knowledge practices and ideas from 545 districts. So if you go to website as uh, srishti.org, S-R-I-S-T-I.org, or nifindia.org, you would find how many creative people we have met, we have honored them. And the President of India, for example, the last uh, eight years has been honoring the grassroots innovators. On 18th November, President Patil gave national awards for the fifth biennial competition. And yesterday, the former president, Dr. Kalam, gave awards to creative children. So we work with children, we work with adult people, and we also work with centenarians, that is, 100-year-old people. And what makes a person creative or innovator, do you think? I think uh, inability to live with the inefficiency, inability to live with the problem unsolved, and what we call in Sanskrit, Samved and Shilta, which means and the ability to look at some, or feel somebody else's pain as one's own pain is probably the root of innovation. Many innovators are solving problems, not just their own. In fact, they're solving problems that affect somebody else's life. But they feel it so intensely as if it is their own problem. And that generates tremendous possibility of solving a problem. And since large number of innovations that we have, 90% of them, 95% of them, are from people who are not much educated, who don't have much material resources. So what do they optimize when they solve problems? Their brain, their mind, their knowledge. And how can we start bringing in innovation a lot more into schools? How can you teach about innovation? First of all, a teacher who is willing to acknowledge that he or she can learn from children will definitely trigger innovations because children are very creative by design, by, by temperament, by their nature. In fact, we work very hard to stifle their creativity. You know, the whole education system is designed to make them confirm, to make them compliant, and to make them congruent. Whereas innovation requires diversity, innovation requires dissent, innovation requires, uh, you know, ability to see opportunities where none exist, is seemingly. So I would say that our children must be challenged to ask questions about the problem which with, with which their parents and grandparents somehow agree to live with. So for example, a cup of tea that you take in the morning, many of us don't realize that the lady who picks up the tea leaves takes her hand like this and takes it on the back of her, on the basket in the back. For 150 years when the tea, leaf, tea gardens were introduced in India, we have been having 3,000, 4,000 times manual plucking of leaves and taking hand like that. Now our children must be encouraged to think that, look, this is a lot of drudgery. Women do not have to face so much of pain. Find a way in which these leaves can be plucked without having to undergo so much drudgery. Likewise, millions of women carry water on the head. So a lot of problems that our society has, which unfortunately often are not part of the pedagogy, which is triggering the mind of young people to think of solutions. 
So one role that education can play is to pose problems and challenges, unsolved problems and challenges. Second is to share the solutions that young common people have found. So that once I learn, oh my goodness, if this child can develop uh, a beautiful innovation where a physically challenged person can have a seat in the crutch. So you have crutches on which you support yourself and now you have a seat on the crutch itself by which, on which you can rest. Large number of innovations that people have developed, children have developed. We have in our database, Honeybee database at 60 and at NIF. And I would encourage children, uh, teachers at least, to be able to permit students to go beyond the boundaries of what is common, what is rational, and what is congruent. And let children be. Let them find a passion in madness, madness of creativity. For the past century or so, the U.S. has really led the global economy a lot in innovation. What, what do you think we can, in the subcontinent, take from it? Or do you think it's a little overhyped about innovation in the U.S.? Uh, it's glo which countries do you think have led? Well, I would say that, uh, yes, the U.S. had a wonderful time. But, you know, there's a book, very interesting book, in, written by Autumn Stanley, called as Mothers and Daughters of Invention. And she spent 13 years analyzing data in U.S. Patent and Trademark Office. And she found that till 80s, share of women was only 2% in, in, in U.S. In 90s, she increased to about 8%. If we in the developing countries can realize that, look, women have tremendous knowledge which can become the basis for innovation, which can become basis for new technologies for food processing, child care and nutrition, etc., then one thing which U.S. has done not very well could become the advantage of developing countries. Second thing, I think the, the, the lifestyle of people is not very sustainable to my mind. The amount of junk that U.S. produces if India and China start living like the U.S. people do, there's not enough space on this world to store that junk. So I think the lifestyle changes are imperative. And if they don't take place, then India and China will take over. Our innovations are frugal. Our innovations are we have, will have low entropy because we don't have too much material to waste. Indian society, conceptually at least, didn't have the concept of junk. We are the great user of recycling the materials over and over again. So I think there are, there are lessons that U.S. society must learn from its non-sustainable lifestyles, which will make the system very difficult to continue in the way it is, unless they have a lot of wars and they try to create opportunities in wars. Otherwise, in a peaceful world, it won't be possible. So I will encourage that to happen. But I'm also very encouraged by the fact that MIT, for example, has put all its courseware in open source. That's a positive sign. It's not happened in India. My institute hasn't put all its courseware in open source as yet. Although my blog has all my papers without copyright, 300 and odd papers. But most authors in India have not done that as yet as a policy, which MIT did. So I greatly appreciate the spirit of sharing, the spirit of making knowledge accessible, democratizing the knowledge, as some friend put it. That is the positive side of it. And where, where is your blog? What's the... Srishti, S-R-I-S-T-I dot O-R-G slash Anil G, A-N-I-L-G. Okay. And uh, where can people find out a bit more about the Honeybee Network? You can go to honeybee dot O-R-G yeah. or S-R-I-S-T-I dot O-R-G or N-I-India dot O-R-G. Okay, great. Thank you very much for your time, and uh, look forward to look forward to hearing more about talks of, of innovation from you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.